Procrastination, procrastination, procrastination. I have been procrastinating scheduling videos for quite some time now here on YouTube. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I'm procrastinating for sure. I don't know why it's just so hard for me. It just uses a different part of my brain. I, I don't like using, I guess. <laughs> I'd much rather create the video and have somebody else schedule it for me than me have to do it and think of names and think of captions and just the tediousness of scheduling it all on all the different platforms, especially with the headache of my Facebook being stolen, so now I can't schedule like Instagram or Facebook through the app that I usually use, which makes things so much easier, but I can't do that now. So, you know what? In church this week, we were talking about how sometimes we can often get into a place where we complain about a blessing, and it was talking about the, the, the Israelites that were roaming in, in, in the land uh, or in uh, the desert for 40 years. They started complaining about like the blessings that God was doing for them, even in the desert, where, and they were like, oh, I just wish we could go back to Egypt where they were slaves. Life was not much better, but it's funny, like here I am complaining about having to schedule videos. Meanwhile, I have the opportunity to do what I enjoy and post about what I enjoy. I would so much rather take <laughs> the frustration and annoyance of scheduling videos, even like as dumb as it is, over sitting in a cubicle and doing something, doing a job that I don't like. So you know what, I'm, I apologize actually, I'm not gonna complain, I'm gonna go do this now. <laughs> Uh, nothing like filming some videos in Northport. I mean, this is the a little bit more industrial side of it. The actual main part of Northport is all the way down there. The more I think, the less I know. But I still do it, even though I'm trying to break the habit. Yeah, I'm trying to break the habit. My mind's Greenhouse is looking really good, though, man. Let me tell you. Greenhouse is looking really good. So in preparation for the baby, this weekend Jamie and I made a ton of food just to essentially like freeze and have ready so that when the baby comes it makes it that much easier when we're trying to like do dinner and stuff and, and, and breakfast and stuff. So we made a big omelet, we made and I chopped it off and froze it in pieces, we made um, chicken cutlets, we made a ton, ton of stuff. But some of the omelet was in the fridge and for breakfast yesterday I had, I had, I had some of it. So I wanted to make more, so I just got new eggs. Uh, and in the omelet, I'm going to be chopping up some greens from the from the garden. So uh, let's let's collect some greens and chop them all up. So first, we're going to take some of this chive. So we got one very long green onion. I don't know if there's much else we can really. Maybe we'll take some. Actually, we'll take some. Um, these are microgreens. So I actually decided to harvest all the microgreens so I could start growing new ones in that spot next. All right, so we have a whole slew of garden vegetables, like uh, spinach and collards. I took a bunch of my uh, herbs over here, oregano, thyme, marjoram, sage, and uh, we got a whole little thing that we're gonna put in here. All right, so we chopped it all up. Now we're gonna mix it with the 10 eggs I just put in there and throw it in the oven. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, 10 egg garden omelet. Every day that I have before the baby, or I guess every minute, I guess is an extra minute that I have to kind of get things in order work-wise. So I'm um, gonna spend some time going through, essentially scheduling things for myself, for my assistants, for my editors, getting content kind of aligned and maybe even making some content. Every, every moment is a gift. <laughs> This is your daily reminder not to be afraid of making mistakes. Um, I think that so many people, including myself, so often get caught in the fear of making mistakes. But here I am still working on some music, um, and I actually accidentally hit the wrong numbers on my keypad over here. I was trying to input something, and I hit the wrong numbers, and because I hit the wrong numbers, I actually liked that, the mistake, better than I actually did the, the, the what I was intending. So be open to mistakes, because sometimes, as my friend Bob Ross over there said, Mistakes can be happy accidents. So I just wrapped up a kind of uh, impromptu, kind of not impromptu, uh, really great though, interview with Chris Sklenafi. Chris Sklenafi. <laughs> but I guess I must have baby brain or something like that, but um, I had it in my calendar for tomorrow, but apparently it was today, which was great. He, got, he was flexible and you know, ended up working out totally fine. But uh, that being said, you know, I, I made the mistake of just, you know, misscheduling and stuff. So I got ready, I did some research on him. I mean, the dude's worked on so many things. Like, the dude literally went on tour with Ed Sheeran and Benny Blanco and recorded the Divide album with them. Like, that, that's crazy, you know? I mean, I, I listened to the album like, like crazy when it came out. You know, to think he worked on it is insane. But I'm trying to keep all my ducks in a row 
uh, before the baby comes, I'm actually kind of rushing to try and get back out to the post office so I can send him this thank you package before, you know, I, I should have put the, the stickers on before, before I, uh, before the coffee, but stick, I just picked up the stickers, new stickers, when I went down into Northport earlier. I'm trying to keep all my ducks in a row before the baby comes because I don't know what to expect once the baby comes. The post office closes at 5. It's currently, uh, 435 I think just trying to get there for they close there we go that looks much better much better but yeah great interview with Chris he's a really cool guy and it's it's just it's really interesting it's encouraging actually to see you know what comes from just doing something for a long time you know at this point I've done over a hundred interviews and now it's really interesting to see that the interviews while I'm still going out and getting interviews some of the interviews are coming to me in the sense of my Fernando Reyes and my uh, and this Chris Scanafi uh, interview, both were brought to me. Liz Abramson, the personal assistant to Chris Geringer, started her own management uh, label. Uh, started her own management label, and she's she's managing now mixers. And she reached out to me, was like, "Hey, I really enjoyed the interviews that you do. Would you be interested in interviewing some of my? I don't know what you call them. Not, I guess not clients, but uh, my my the people that I manage." And I'd be like, "Absolutely!" Like, I'd be first of all, thank you for thinking of me. And she's like, "Well, thank you for doing it," kind of thing. So that's been really cool. And then Eliana Valencia is Fernando's wife. You know, so just be with who also works at, at Sterling Sound with um, Chris Garinger and. Uh, Liz so it's just it's kind of cool to see how things are going full circle now and like in the sense of like who you know just staying in the industry long enough kind of like opportunity starts to come to you again and, and we even talked about this in, in, in my interview with Chris Sklenafi how opportunity kind of comes when you put the work in and when you um you know you're in the right place at the right time but also like when the right place right time I think is a lot to do with you know hard work but also emotional intelligence and and just trying to be a good person to people and trying to be nice and likable and also yourself and i think that as you do that more people want to be around you people don't want to be around fake people people want to be around genuine friends so i try to be as much of a genuine friend as i can be to everybody and i it looks like it's paying up and i'm not even doing that just so i can be on their good side it's genuinely who i want to be as a person and i think that it honestly if i that's not who i genuinely want to be as a person that would be me being fake and nobody likes that, so that's the case. So let's see if we can get there in time. It's 4:37. I think I'll be. I think I'll make it. So now I'm kind of just thinking out loud. I'm wondering, what could I send Liz, the person that set up these interviews and that reached out to me, um, also become a friend over over the past two years? What could I send her as a thank you? Be like, hey, you know, like people want to be recognized. Like whether they like people like thank yous. You know, people appreciate when you appreciate what you do, what they do for you. So like, you know, I'm trying to go out of the way. And also the part of the reason that I'm sending this to Chris is like, I want, I want to, um, like people like, wow, oh my gosh, the next, it, cause he's, he lives in New York city. So this will, this will arrive tomorrow, likely. So like the fact that like, oh my gosh, we literally, you know, did the interview yesterday and it's here now, you know, less than 24 hours later, like makes an impression on people. And that's the kind of the impression I want to give off. And I'm just kind of thinking out loud. So just share my, that's the reason why I do these vlogs to share my thoughts, you know?